my true crime lovers, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be talking about 10 celebs that have taken someone's life. Whether it was an accident or intentional, this is the top 10. But first, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit that like button and that notification bell. So, now that we've gotten that out the way, let's go ahead and get into this list. Matthew Broderick Matthew Broderick is best known for his roles in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the voice of Simba in the movie Lion King, Godzilla, Inspector Gadget, Deck the Haws, Tower Heist, and so much more. But did you know that he actually had taken two people's lives? Well, on August 5th, 1987, Matthew was on vacation with his girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Gray, when he crossed into the wrong lane and collided head-on with another car, taking the lives of Anna Gallagher, 28, and her mother, Margaret Doherty, 63. Matthew suffered from a fractured leg and ribs, a concussion, and a collapsed lung. Jennifer's injuries included severe whiplash, which later required surgery to avoid paralysis. Now, Matthew told police he had no memory of the car accident, and he only remembers waking up in the hospital. He was charged with causing death by dangerous driving and faced up to five years in prison, but was convicted of the lesser charge for careless driving and had to pay a fine. The victim's family were upset at first with the ruling, but they later said that they forgave Matthew. Michael Massey. Michael Massey is best known for his roles in The Crow, Catwoman, and the Spider-Man movies. On March 31st, 1993, Michael accidentally shot and took actor Brandon Lee's life on set during the filming of the movie The Crow. This was actually a result of an improperly prepared prop gun. Traumatized by what happened, Michael returned to New York and took a year off acting, and he never saw the film. In an interview in 2005, 12 years after the incident, Michael said that he still had nightmares about it, stating, I don't think you ever get over something like that. Michael wasn't charged with anything, but in August 1993, Lee's mother did file a lawsuit against the filmmakers. The suit was settled two months later under undisclosed terms. Rebecca Gayhart. Rebecca Gayhart is best known for her roles on Beverly Hills, 90210, Nothing to Lose, Scream 2, Urban Legend, and Jawbreaker. On June 13, 2001, while driving, Rebecca swerved around a car that hit their brakes in front of her when she then struck a nine year old boy. Jorge Cruz Jr., as he was chasing his soccer ball across a street in Los Angeles. Jorge passed the following day from his injuries. On November 27, 2001, Rebecca pleaded no contest to vehicular manslaughter. She was sentenced to three years of probation and a one-year suspension of her license a $2,800 fine, and 750 hours of community service. Rebecca helped pay for Jorge's funeral, and his family also filed a wrongful death lawsuit, which was eventually settled outside of court. Rebecca said in an interview that the pain of this tragedy would live with her forever. She also said that she thought about taking her own life as well after this accident. Charles S. Dutton. Charles is best known for his roles in the movies The Piano Lesson, Alien 3, Menace to Society, and A Time to Kill. In 1967, when Charles was just 16 years old, he got into a fight that resulted in taking a life of a man. Charles claimed that the man had attacked him with a knife and that it was self-defense. Charles pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to five years in prison. He was released on parole after 18 months. While on parole, he was charged on a handgun violation and was sentenced to three more years. 
And then he got into a fight with a guard, adding on another eight years to his sentence. Now, I feel like his story shows that anyone can turn their life around because while he was in prison, Charles got his GED. He created a drama department in the prison and eventually completed a two-year college program, graduating with an Associates of Arts degree. Charles was paroled on August 20th, 1976. After his release from prison, he enrolled as a drama major at Townsend State University, where he graduated with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in 1978. After his time at Townsend, Charles earned a master's degree in acting from the Yale School of Drama in 1983. From there, he was getting parts in Broadway, and then he started getting roles on television series and then movies. His story is so inspirational and really shows that anyone can turn their lives around for the better. Brandy Norwood Brandy Norwood is an amazing singer, songwriter, and actress, best known for her roles in Moesha, which is one of my favorite shows, by the way, Cinderella, I Still Know What You Did Last Summer, and the show Queens. On December 30th, 2006, while driving on the freeway in Los Angeles, Brandy was driving about 65 miles per hour when the car in front of Brandy slowed down because it had actually hit a car in front of them, causing Brandy to hit the Toyota, which was driven by a 38-year-old woman. The Toyota then hit another vehicle and then slid sideways before it struck a center divider. The Toyota was then hit by an oncoming car. The driver of the Toyota was rushed to the hospital, but unfortunately passed away. Brandy wasn't arrested or charged with anything, but there have been multiple lawsuits filed against her. Brandy came out and said that the whole experience completely changed her life and that she's a better person from it, and that her heart goes out to everyone involved, and that she prays about it every single day. Johnny Lewis Johnny Lewis is best known for his roles in Son of Anarchy, The O.C., Underclassmen, Raise Your Voice, and the 2007 Aliens vs. Predator movie. And he also dated Katy Perry for about a year. On October 30th, 2011, Johnny suffered head injuries from a high-speed motorcycle accident. Though an MRI was recommended, and Johnny's father also scheduled two MRI tests for him, Johnny refused to take them. Now, before this, Johnny never got into any type of trouble and seemed to be pretty normal. But after this incident, he started acting different and he started getting into trouble. He was arrested three times between 2011 and 2012 and for crazy stuff like fighting and breaking into a woman's house. And then on September 26, 2012, at the age of 28, just five days after being released from jail, Police were called by neighbors after Johnny violently attacked two people at the property next door from where he was staying, and neighbors also said they heard a woman screaming from his home. When police arrived, they found Johnny unalive in his driveway, and 81-year-old Catherine Davis, who was his landlord, and her cat unalive in his house. Now, there was no substances found in his system, and they couldn't determine if he fell on accidents or if he was trying to take his own life. His father feels like he was mentally off from the accident in 2011, and that's why he might have done what he did, because he said he would have never done anything like this, and that Johnny was a completely different person after that accident. Phil Lewis Bill Lewis is best known for his roles on the Disney Channel. He played in Zack and Cody, The Sweet Life on Deck, Dad Napped, and the movie Kicking and Screaming. But did you know before all of that, Bill had taken a life? Well, in late December 1991, Bill was arrested after he fatally struck Isabella Duarte in a car crash. He was charged with manslaughter and driving while intoxicated. 
His blood alcohol level at the time was three times the legal limit. The court sentenced Phil to five years in prison, but suspended four, citing that Phil worked after his arrest with a prison-based theater group that performed in jails, schools, and churches. It highlighted the consequences of drug abuse. Phil was also ordered to serve two years probation after his release and was to perform 350 hours of community service. Now, I don't know about you, but that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Don't get me wrong, I loved Phil on Zack and Cody. I mean, I grew up watching that show. But he did choose to drive a vehicle while completely drunk and took someone's life. To me, him only serving one year is crazy. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Caitlyn Jenner Caitlyn Jenner is best known for being an Olympian and for being married to Kris Jenner. And she appeared on the reality television series Keeping Up with the Kardashians. In February 2015, Caitlyn was involved in a fatal multi-vehicle collision in Malibu, California. Caitlyn was driving an SUV that was towing an ATV when she then rear-ended a Lexus, pushing it into oncoming traffic. Kim Howe, the driver of the Lexus, was then hit by a Hummer traveling in the opposite direction, and she was unalived on impact. Caitlin proceeded forward and hit another vehicle, a Prius, whose driver suffered mild injuries. Caitlin wasn't charged with anything, but did have to pay out a few civil suits to the families. Now, I do kind of think that this incident was suspicious especially since she hit two vehicles so i just kind of wonder why she wasn't charged with anything or didn't have to serve some type of community service or something on those lines but let me know what you think down in the comments venus williams venus williams is best known for being one of the greatest tennis players of all time on June 9, 2017, Venus was driving in Palm Beach, Florida when another car collided with her SUV before she cleared the intersection. 78-year-old Jerome Barson passed away two weeks later from injuries from the crash. Now, at first, it was speculated that Venus drove through the intersection when she wasn't supposed to and that she caused the accident. But after investigation, Authorities determined that the crash was caused by an unidentified third driver, so no one was ever charged in this accident, but the family did file a civil suit against Venus, even though this fatal accident wasn't Venus's fault. Alec Baldwin Alec Baldwin is best known for his roles in Beetlejuice, It's Complicated, the Mission Impossible movies, and many other movies and shows. On October 21st, 2021, Alec was filming on the set of his upcoming film, Rust, which he was also the producer of. When the unthinkable would happen, Alec would shoot a prop gun and take the life of Helena Hutchins, who was filming the movie, and also injured director Joel Souza. The Hutchins family filed a wrongful death suit against Baldwin for his part in the fatal shooting. Alec reached an undisclosed settlement with the Hutchins family in their wrongful death lawsuit. The courts went back and forth on whether or not they were going to file charges against Alec, but in January 2024, a grand jury indicted Alec on involuntary manslaughter charge. The indictment provides prosecutors with two options of pursuing this charge, one based on negligent use of a firearm, and the other for a felony misconduct with a total disregard or indifference for the safety of others. On May 24th, 2024, a judge denied a motion, which was filed by Alec, to dismiss his trial. Alec's trial is set to begin July 9th, 2024, and is expected to last about two weeks. Do you guys think he should be charged? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. 
Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you would like a part two let me know down in the comments and don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell for part two and I'll see you guys next time.